Hi guys, my name is Reema Behel and I'm back with yet another course. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on uh, vocabulary and I'm basically going to be doing two separate courses for you. One is going to be for synonyms and the other one for antonyms. Uh, I'm going to go through all these words in, in alphabetical order so that it's easy for you to understand. Uh, the basic premise for this course, uh, guys, is, is that you increase the number of words that are there in your bank currently. You know more words, you try to remember their meanings. That is why what I have done is that I have uh, included pictures in each of these slides and also along with the word and we will be going alphabetically. I have explained its meaning and I would try to wherever possible uh, explain its origin to you and also try to use it in a sentence for you all. Let's, without wasting any further time, start with the first one, which is abdicate. Now, abdicate means to step down. And literally here we have shown steps. But yeah, it means to step down from a position of power, essentially. So sometimes someone who is in power, they might decide to give up that power, to step down from that position. And when they do that, they abdicate their authority. That is, they give up all their duties and perks of the job. Essentially, the word was first used, um, I'm guessing, uh, before the 17th century it used to be referred to disowning one's children that is to giving them away but after uh, 17 the 17th century the word started being used in relation to giving up power the synonyms for the word as can be used or asked in the test would be abandon or renounce now of course there can be more synonyms i have used one or two uh, with uh, each of the words you must, whichever words I'm teaching in the lesson here, guys, just go out there and uh, look these up, try to use them in a sentence wherever possible, and also uh, try to remember or include more synonyms so that it becomes easier for you to attempt such questions when you sit for the exam. So abandon and renounce are the synonyms for abdicate. A uh, sentence can be in recent decades, it has become a tradition for the monarch to abdicate the throne. Next is abhor. Abhor means to detest or to hate a lot. Okay, so abhor, um, let's say if you just want to say that, you know, you really, really don't like something, then you just say, I abhor it or I loathe it. Another synonym for this can be loathe, L-O-A-T-H-E. Yes, you can see this girl is striking down the symbol of the Nazis. So I think she really, what we are trying to say here is that she abhors Hitler or his policies or whatever he did with the world. The next one is abysmal. Notice the pronunciation here. I'm not saying abysmal. It's abysmal. Now, abysmal um, basically can have two meanings. We usually, you know, like let's say if you want to say something is really, really bad, then you just call it abysmal. So if a person, let's say, shows up to your party, if you throw in the party and only one person comes to your party, then we say, oh, that is a very abysmal turnout. So um, another sentence here can be nothing that Donald Trump does has any impact on his abysmal approval rating. So this is how we use abysmal that is extremely hopeless or wretched. But uh, as you can see that it comes from the word abyss. Abyss means a ditch or a crevice or a hole. Okay. And uh, so if that is bottomless or boundless or unending, in that context also we use abysmal. But usually it is used in that negative context and that is how you should use it. Next, admonish. Admonish means to scold gently or to, in, it's, it's, it's more like, you know, you're cautioning somebody or warning them. It's not really like uh, you're going all out and scolding them badly. You're just trying to, you know, in a nice uh, uh, sort of semi-friendly way also trying to just tell them that, you know, hey, don't do, don't do this. This is not good. Like the, the teacher admonished the student uh, um, and told him not to leave the class early, you know, that sort of a thing. So the synonym is when you berate somebody or you even counsel somebody. So it's not scolding, scolding per se. It's just, you know, a, a word of caution, like, you know, how you can see this coach here is trying to sort of like what we would say, admonish the younger player. Next one is alacrity. Alacrity, I love this word. I just love pronouncing it the way it sounds, alacrity. Now, um, the slide is slightly cut off, but yeah, al alacrity, uh, let's say... Uh, someone with alacrity shows a cheerful willingness and a very eager behavior. Like right now, I'm speaking with you very eagerly, you know. It's like a kid whose mother has told him that he can buy anything in a candy store. So that kid, he he has, uh, he, he shows alacrity, okay. That's a very 
a cheerful readiness to respond that is alertness uh, you know a willingness sort of a thing that that that's there um while the noun alacrity okay it normally refers to somebody's peppy behavior it can also describe a certain mood or a tempo of a musical composition that also indicates how music should be played so here is another meaning for you alacrity comes from the latin word alacritus uh, and also interestingly the italian musical term allegro okay is a sort of a near relation to this word if if you're looking at the origin okay i'm going to move a little fast i don't think i have a lot of time for this lesson allusion allusion is an indirect reference or a hint which is also uh, which can also be said as connotation like i i use the word connotation a lot um an allusion okay the similar sounding words are illusion and delusion which is your first homework for this particular course find out how allusion is different from illusion and delusion now while an allusion it it often references uh, you know a famous work of art or literature for instance um, you might say that you uh, like oh i am obviously no expert at love so that is an allusion to your failed relationships but the main thing over here to remember is that an allusion is a brief hint or a very quick mention you know like it's meant to bring to mind a particular subject but it always avoids getting into the real depth of things ambivalent ambivalent means to have mixed feelings about something uh, while etym etymologically i mean if you look at the meaning um, if if you speak about ambivalent uh, then 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 it means that you're being pulled by two equally strong things but in practice when we use ambivalence often arises from caring very little any which way so you might feel ambivalent let's say about your lunch options if you have to choose between khichdi or uh, i don't know palak paneer or something so it's 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 undecided you're neutral you're equivocal or inconclusive matlab farak nahi padta sort of a thing you know theek hai jo hai chal raha hai chalta hai theek hai you're ambivalent about it anachronism um this which is also you can also pronounce this as uh, anachronism uh, but uh, this essentially means incongruity and anachronism is something that does not fit in its time period for instance like you say okay you dial your smartphone but it's just touch screen right so you're not technically dialing anything anachronism comes from the greek roots ana which means against chron which means time so together they represent a situation in which something happens that should not happen because it, it it belongs to another time period so you see anachronism all the time in movies you know like if you see a jet plane flying during the time of an old civil war you know or the knights are jousting over a maiden in the times of shakespeare so something that does not fit a time period or it's out of time sort of a thing next is opposite now opposite is uh, again you might confuse this with opposite opposite is completely different something that is opposite is fitting or relevant so like we say it's opposite to uh, decorate your home on diwali or uh, it's opposite to make sure that you pay your taxes before uh, the end of the financial year something that is pertinent or germane is also an a synonym for this so opposite means pertinent or germane as synonyms which are not in exact meaning uh, that that is suitable or well adapted they can be used as synonyms in this case next one is arcane arcane uh, i love the word the synonym that we have for this is esoteric something arcane is understood or known only by very few for instance almost everyone knows about the basics of cricket but only a very few people would have an arcane knowledge of its history that makes them a true fan so arcane is mysterious or known or understood only by very few people and the word or the synonym is esoteric askance askance means with suspicion mistrust or disapproval askance is also skeptically now askance basically is this word okay that jab hum teri nazar se kisi ko dekhte hain so askance uh, it's 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 i think it's a perfect word uh, that describes uh, a, a suspicious or distrusting manner of looking you know um, that that sort of a thing so you look at somebody askance like you know oh okay like you're squinting your eye and you're looking at them and trying to figure out Okay. Next is assuage. Assuage basically means to alleviate or to appease. मतलब किसी के दर्द को कम करना. To ease the pain or to relieve the pain means you assuage the pain. Like you assuage your hunger by eating a bag of chips or something. You most likely the common things that you assuage are fears, concerns, grief, guilt, etc. Next one is audacity. 
audacity is that if you're bold or if you're reckless or daring um so if you have if if you have audacity then you're the one who's daring uh you have a daring character that you're running a let's say if you're running a red light even though you've been given the ticket means you're audacious or bold enough to do it so it's reckless daring with this we come to the end of the first part of the words we are going alphabetically we're going to continue in the next lesson thank you for watching Hi guys, let's resume quickly without wasting any further time. We are covering a lot of words. We are trying to cover alphabetically as many words as we can for the competitive exams that you sit for and this is in the English section where you get questions. I'm sure multiple choice questions, you get four options and you have to choose the synonyms or the antonyms. I'll be covering the antonyms or the opposites in the next part of the course uh, and uh, here we are basically just focusing on synonyms or uh, words with similar meanings. Let's quickly resume with a. Uh, the next word here is avarice. Now, avarice is just a fancy word for greed. So that is your love for the riches, or if you know you want more of ice cream, cookies, uh, money, anything. Your heart is full of avarice, is what we say. You can look at the synonyms here: avidity or covetousness. I mean, I'm sure that when it comes in the exams, it should not be as tough as ex is sort of words that you have to choose from, but. Just in case it is, these are words that you should know. Let's move on to be now. Beguile. Now, beguile is a very interesting word for me because while in synonyms I have written here that it means to mislead or to delude somebody or to influence by trickery or flattery, the and also the picture, of course, it indicates. But you know, the funny part is that while beguile means to trick somebody, uh, either by deception. The funny part is, it's also, uh, you know, uh, me. It 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 means to enchant somebody with irresistible charm or beauty. You know, like you could be beguiled by a supermodel also, or a beautiful place or idea can actually beguile you as much as or as easily as a person. So beguile does not always mean that the person or the thing that is beguiling you is tricking you. But there is a sense of you know enchantment that sort of takes away uh, your normal powers of judgment. for that matter beleaguered as you can see in the picture uh is is to persecute or to surround with military forces but again or uh, what you should know is that while beleaguered originally meant you know uh to lay siege to and it originates from the 16th century dutch term which meant to camp all around but eventually its meaning has changed and it has also come to mean to harass or to bother somebody in a in in some way or the other that is to pester or to badger somebody like you know um, a a school teacher she might find some annoying children who beleaguer her with requests for candies or cookies or you know things like that in the classroom so that is also what beleaguered means it does not necessarily only mean to surround with military forces um so you can remember that the word league or l e a g u e league that is there in the middle of beleaguered uh so if you know the spelling of league it will be easier for you to remember the spelling of the word beleaguered Next is beseech. Now beseech, like if if you're begging for something, but you just want to sound a little bit formal, a little bit old fashioned, then you just say, "I beseech you to please do this." Or it just really just captures how urgent or desperate you are. Um, and also in some ways, you know, instead of just like begging, begging, you just save on your dignity a little bit uh, by using the word beseech and not uh, beg literally. Next word is blasphemy, which I mean, I'm sure in uh, you know in in newspapers and everything you keep reading that was a blasphemous comment. So it's anything that is uh, related with profanity or something that is offensive, uh, any offensive thing about God or religion that is blasphemy. As simple as that. Um, it's an insult to something that is held sacred by somebody in simple terms. But here also, let me add um, that uh, you can you know sometimes people also use the word blasphemous. blasphemous jokingly for instance uh, if uh, your friend uh, says that hey i don't like chocolate ice cream and you supposedly love chocolate ice cream and you're like what are you saying that you don't like chocolate ice cream that's blasphemous you know so you just sometimes use the word jokingly also next bystander very very simple bystander as the uh, word and the name suggests he does exactly uh, what the word describes here that is they stand by and they watch whatever is happening by not participating or not getting involved in it so you're just a chance spectator like you know you will often hear this word oh that person was just an innocent bystander so an onlooker is a bystander 
Next, let's move on to C very quickly. Kajol. Uh, do not confuse with the name of a certain Bollywood actress here. Kajol. In synonyms, we have mentioned beguile. But kajol can have other synonyms also in, in, in the sense uh, it can be wheedle or coax somebody or to persuade somebody basically or someone to do something that they don't really want to do. Now, the funny part is, Kajol, you know, it's it's like, please, will you do this? Pretty please. I will be your best friend if you do this. Please do this. Can you? I mean, come on. You besiege them to, you know, sort of help you. So you're cajoling them or you cajole somebody or you persuade them and by, by using some insincere compliments or promises, you know. Uh, the word here that is slightly cut off, guys, is capricious or C-A-P-R-I-C-I-O-U-S. Capricious is an unpredictable change or crotchety, as the word suggests. Um, capricious, uh, it's basically an adjective that describes a person or a thing that is very impulsive or unpredictable like let's say a bride who suddenly just leaves the groom standing at the altar what sorry bollywood movies may dekha hoga you must have seen that you know a bride just suddenly runs away you know from from um, in our indian movies the mandap so that's you know that's a fickle minded person or that's an impulsive or a whimsical person other synonyms can be impulsive or whimsical you're capricious you know it can describe a person as 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 well as let's say a quickly changing weather uh, like a capricious spring storm or winter rain or something like that. Chagrin. Uh, chagrin basically is a noun that represents an emotion or a feeling and it's an uncomfortable one. Let, let's say if you feel chagrin, it means that you're embarrassed or distressed because of some failure. Uh, it actually comes from the French word of the same spelling and it means uh, anxiety or vexation, you know. So uh, chagrin, like we described, this person is probably feeling chagrin. He's mortified or annoyed, uh, you know, marked by disappointment or humiliation of some sort. The next word is condescend. Now, the, see here that, you know, in condescend, it, it contains the word descend. So descend means to move down from a higher place. So you can think of condescend as lowering yourself to do a task that you feel is sort of beneath you. Like, let's say the kings and the queens uh, would never condescend to do their own laundry at the palace, you know, for instance. So you behave as though you, you are conscious of descending from a superior position or rank or dignity to a, a lower or a more inferior one uh, again beguile here would not necessarily be a sort of synonym that we can use maybe you can use the word like patronize uh, or, you know for uh, condescend as a synonym confabulate confabulate is just a fancy way of saying talk like you can see all these women here they are confabulating or they're just conversing or chatting informally let's say if you're feeling formal then you don't just chat with your best friend on the phone you confabulate you know regular people talk but you know fancy people they confabulate so it's just a word that you know you can you can use um, it comes actually from the latin word com that means together and fabulari which means to talk um, and also like how we say fables or tale. So I think that's how, you know, you sort of put the word together and you say confabulate. The next word is conjecture. Now conjecture simply means to guess or to deduce or infer on slight evidence. Uh, it's a presumption. Um, let's say um, how, how we would say a statement, a, a, a sentence like statements should be based on facts and not conjecture. So you see, how, you can see the word conjecture actually means that you can create a theory like how we can see here. You can create a theory or an opinion about something without really basing it in fact because the original definition of conjecture that's from old french it actually means uh, an interpretation of signs and omens now obviously signs and omens they are subjective right so whatever sense you make of it somebody else might make a different sense of it like uh, how you can say maybe some weather reports are conjectures even though they are based on facts some people might just say oh they're just conjectures you know there's no real truth based in them Consecrate. Consecrate basically means to make holy or to dedicate to a higher purpose. You need to consecrate a building to turn it into a church or you need to consecrate, uh, let's say, a week in uh, New Delhi uh, to find like the perfect chart. Uh, so like, okay, how do, how, how do I explain these two meanings here? So um, 
the meaning of words they tend to stretch over time right so while consecrate would mean dedicated to god or something sacred eventually it means it is it is dedicated to anything or devoted to anything let's say you know consecrated um um a, a week in uh, new delhi like i said to find the perfect plate of chaat you know you devote a week or you uh, commit to that thing construe is the last word here which means to interpret or to explain now if you interpret something or make sense of it you construe its meaning let's say if there is a, a girl in your class who's asking you you know to sit with her for lunch it means you can construe that she wants to be friends with you that is to decipher or to explicate as synonyms guys i hope this is helping you i'll quickly move on to the next in the coming lesson thank you Hi guys, welcome to the next part of uh, this course. So um, you can see that the beginning slide is similar to that of the previous lesson that I've just completed. My point here is that um, I have broken these down alphabetically, and we are going through the synonyms or words that have similar meanings to the ones that we are discussing in these lessons, and we are going to discuss them in alphabetical order. Till now, we have just reached uh, till alphabet C. and uh, i have divided these lessons alphabet wise so it's easier for you to follow them and understand them these are questions that are usually asked in a lot of competitive exams and i hope that they help you with your preparation the last word that we discussed in the previous lesson was uh, construe and i gave you the example of how if a new girl in your class asks you to sit for lunch with you then you could probably construe that she wants to be friends with you so uh, that that is how we explain the meaning and for those of you who have just joined us from this lesson onwards the idea is that we are going through this word by word and we are trying to discover and figure out the different contexts in which the words can be used and we are discussing one or more synonyms for each of the words this i think would really make it very clear for you uh if if you can't remember certain meanings maybe the explanations can help you decide the right uh, meaning of certain word uh let's move on with uh, and continue with c the next one here is copious so if you have a copious amount of something means that you have a lot of it like if you're taking copious notes right now then you will know uh when it uh, uh you know when the time has come for the review sessions uh so and you can probably just perform well in your competitive exams in future if you're taking copious notes uh that is one way in which you can use it um so you can use copious for something that is quantitative like let's say you have copious admirers uh and you can also use it for something that is qualitative like copious gratitude that you feel for having those admirers uh the synonyms here are bounteous and exuberant uh while exuberant again guys one thing that i want you all to note is that synonyms are words that are close or similar to the word that we are discussing here that's copious does not mean that in exuberant exactly means copious these are two different uh, th- these have slightly different meanings you know for that matter what is the exact difference uh, is the your homework for this slide i you should go back and figure out the difference and then tell me how is exuberant different from copious so yeah copious if 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 you like is large in quantity or number and another synonym can be abundant corroborate so corroborate is uh, in very simple language means to back somebody else's story for example a witness in court corroborates the testimony of others so it means to make certain or to confirm some something so you're making it authentic okay that is how we use the word corroborate as you can see here the figure that we have used is probably just raising his hand saying okay i corroborate i agree and i confirm that xyz is telling the truth D- okay we have advanced to d now and the first word that we are discussing starting with alphabet d is debacle now debacle is a violent breakdown or a sudden overthrow as the synonym we mentioned vanquishment over here um you know we can also use debacle to refer to probably a fiasco or a disaster or a great great failure so let's say if uh, several dogs you know they run on to the field during a cricket game and they just you know create a chaos and players are tripping all over and they are maybe chewing up the grass or things like that so you can call the whole event a debacle 
Okay, so debacle means it's an utter and a complete failure and a disaster. Next one is decadent. Um, decadent can be used as an adjective to describe a wasteful indulgence or extravagance. So let's say celebrities, you know, who find themselves unable to manage sudden fame or fortune, they sometimes tend to go overboard and they throw like, you know, like parties worth lakhs and lakhs of rupees and they live that fast life and maybe turn to alcohol or other things. And because they're famous, then we read about them and we read about their decadent lifestyle in the tabloids or newspapers. So decadent uh, says decaying or uh, decayed, especially in terms of morals, that is degraded or debauched. So this is the point. So decadent um, is, like we said, it's indulgence or it's a lot of it, but it's usually wasteful. Hence, we've used strong terms like decaying or decayed here. Dilute. Dilute, again, I, um, when I was uh, uh, speaking about the word illusion, then I also spoke about delusion. So that is where the word delude comes from. Delude means to deceive or to beguile, a word that we have already discussed, or to misguide. To delude simply is to trick or to fool, uh, often in relation to maybe even your own self. Like if you delude yourself into thinking that the uh, mitai that your mom has made is apparently low in calories and fat, then you will actually be disappointed to find out that no, it isn't. She's actually put a lot of ghee or butter in it. So my point is, to delude means that you're even tricking or fooling your own self into believing something that does not really exist or might not be true. Deride. Now deride, uh, let me uh, explain the meaning. Of course, you've written here that delight means to ridicule or to laugh contemptuously at somebody or to dispar disparage somebody. Now, um, let's let's explain this or break this down. Now, deride comes from D and ride. These are two different terms here, deride. So, to ride people means to get onto their case and to give them a hard time. To deride is to do the same thing but with an insulting language or poor treatment. Like, deride, it actually comes from the Latin words uh, deridere, which means to ridicule or to scorn somebody. And it's usually used to express dislike or even hatred for some, some for, for, for some, you know. Uh, so deride means if you're criticizing somebody with words um, is a common way to deride. Or we can say that, you know, politicians, they often deride each other in their speeches during election campaigns. That's a good way to use it. The next word is desultory. I love the word. I love the way it's pronounced. And I love the way it sounds. Desultory. Desultory means aimless or chaotic, means lacking in consistency, constancy or visible order. So if basically if you lack a definite plan and you know you flip from one thing to the other, then we say that your actions are desultory, you know, you're just lost. You're just being, you're wandering here and there and you're just jumping from one thing to the other. So being lost, you can, you can say that your actions or the way you're behaving, it's, that's, that's just desultory. That's how you use the word. As you can see here, there's this mumble jumble here. So it's all lost, desultory. Next, diatribe. Again, diatribe is a word um, that uh, is often used uh, when we say that, you know, somebody is giving like an angry or a critical speech. That is what a diatribe is. It's a bitter, sharply abusive denunciation or an attack or a criticism denunciation means to denounce yeah to say that you know oh no we don't agree with it sort of a thing so um for instance uh, you know and, and okay so i'll tell you a funny thing with most diatribes okay the speaker thinks that he or she is well informed and knows that uh, something uh, this this crazy crazy or amazing fact something that probably the listener does not know while mo to most listeners, okay, the diatribe is actually just so angry and unhinged that it's just a waste of time for them. Okay, a castigation. Like, you can see how here, this is the diatribe, you know, just to keep on saying something or evil things. And, you know, you're just unleashing all that venom on something that is not really required. You don't have to have such a strong reaction. Next one is diffident. Diffident is timid or sheepish or doubtful. Somebody who's lacking in self-confidence. So like a diffident person will never become a stand-up comedian sort of, you know, a person. So he's somebody, if you're, let's say, shy, then you, you know, so we say that you have a diffident manner. You lack self-confidence or you, you know, are, are sort of sheepish or doubtful as a person. The last one is disembodied. 
Disembody, as the name suggests, means to divest of a body or an unbody. That's, you know, you don't have a proper form or you can hear maybe a sound that does not have a or physical form to it. For example, as I've walked in the store, I was welcomed by the disembodied voice of a person whom I could not really see. Or we could not see the disembodied ghosts, but we could see the items they were tossing around in the house. So disembodied means there is no proper physical form, okay, that is unbodied or no form per se. So uh, with this, we have finished alphabets up till D. In my next lesson, I'm going to resume with words E onwards. I hope this is helping you. Please do share your feedback and let me know where we can improve. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome to the next lesson in this course. I hope you're enjoying it. I certainly am. I'm really liking putting together all of these words and um, we've had a great time working on this course and uh, I, during the course of making this course, have actually also managed to learn a lot of synonyms and a lot of words that I previously did not know of. So this is being a great learning experience for me as well and I hope you're enjoying it uh, too. Now there are a lot of words that start with the alphabet E, which is what we are essentially focusing on in this lesson. We've shortlisted a couple of words, 10 of them to be precise for this lesson. And uh, these are words that uh, I uh, hope are I, I can explain easily to you and that eventually would remain ingrained in your memory so that in future if you have any question where you know, you're asked to... Uh, tick the correct uh, synonym for any one of these words then they should probably you know stay in your memory and you can attempt them successfully let's start with the first one without wasting any further time this is edify edify as the picture here suggests uh, probably this person is looking for enlightenment uh, at this bulb but yeah it means to enlighten but uh, to be more specific this is uh, to instruct or benefit uh, especially morally or spiritually that is to uplift or in simple terms educate somebody so educate also becomes edify but uh, let's say you want to be a musician when you grow up so those notes, mu musical notes that you study or those music lessons that you take they are the ones you know uh, they that edify you as a budding musician so that is how we use edify a similar sounding word to edify is edifice e-d-i-f-i-c-e -I -I -E. so edifice is a building it's it's like a synonym for the building so you can call a building an edifice of a certain place so to remember edify you can say that the building blocks of something let's say um, um certain specific like these lessons english lessons they are the ones that are you know they uh, let's say serve to edify you as a successful student uh, for certain exams in future this is how we use edify in a specific manner when you educate somebody. Next, oh my god, this picture is just making it all so clear, egalitarian. Egalitarian simply means unbiased or, you know, something that's rooted in equality, impartial, a concept that believes in social and economic equality of all people, irrespective of their gender, class, caste, anything, you know, to be egalitarian means uh, equality, okay? So... Simple, simple terms that egalitarian is equality of all the people and egalitarian society, it gives everyone equal rights. Next is eidetic. Now eidetic, as you can see the picture over here, this person is looking at a photograph. So in simple terms, you can say an eidetic memory or a person who has an eidetic memory uh, is a person who has a photographic memory. So eidetic means uh, constituting visual imagery of vividly experienced and readily reproducible with great accuracy and great detail a recollection is eidetic so um, if, if we have to use it in a sentence then probably we can say that research shows that people with eidetic memories are more likely to be nervous or stressed compared to others so somebody you know who can really like a vivid recollection um, so we can say Sherlock Holmes has an eidetic memory that sort of a thing 
Next is elusive. Elusive, as you can see, this person is running away from something. So elusive does not mean running away, but you can say elusive is difficult to catch or difficult or hard to pin down. Uh, elusive does not necessarily mean deceitful. And again, I repeat myself, synonyms are not an exact meaning of the word. They may be close to the meaning of the word. So for example, you can say that things that are tough to understand or describe, for example, the concept of love or beauty, they are also elusive. So let's say if you have an idea, if you suddenly got an idea about something while listening to this, this lecture and you suddenly, if you don't note it down and later when you try to remember, you realize that you've forgotten it and you can't remember. So we can say that that idea was elusive. It slipped away. So anything that you cannot get hold of with your hands or with your brain, that is elusive, simple. Next is onui, even though it's written as E-N-N-U-I, but it's pronounced as onui, and I'd like to correct myself here. I think one of the previous lessons that I have made for an academy, even I had used the wrong pronunciation at that point of time, and I had pronounced this as uh, pronounced this at that point of time as anyway. But the exact pronunciation, because this is French, it's a French word, or it's derived, or it has French roots. The exact pronunciation of the word is onui. Now, Onyui, as you can see, this person, this uh, this little creature, our leopard here, is really bored, so he's yawning. So that is simply what it means. Onyui means lack of interest, means boredom or weariness. These are the sim uh, these are the synonyms for Onyui. So let's just say um, it's it's a fancy way of saying that you know you're just bored and you're just tired of things. So you're experiencing Onyui. Or let's say a very bad and a boring TV show, it creates on your way. Next is eponym. The picture that we have used here is that of Kutub Minar. And why? You'll get to know in just a minute. So an eponym is a person. It can be real or imaginary. So an eponym is a person, real or imaginary, from whom something as a tribe or a nation or a place is said to take its name. So uh, the synonyms here don't get too bogged down by looking at these big words like sobriquet and agnomen. They simply mean that eponym means that uh, the name of that thing or that person from which a particular place or thing derives its name. For example, down syndrome is an eponym for the english physician john down or we can say that uh, boycott you know a word like boycott was named after charles c boycott so that means uh, boycott becomes an eponym okay over here kutub minar was named after kutubuddin i book so kutubuddin is the eponym on the basis of which we have named our our, our particular structure that we have over here Next is emulate. Emulate means to mimic or not necessarily rivalize. Emulate means to, to excel in something usually through imitation. Um, by imitation, I mean maybe you just imbibe uh, certain good qualities of a person also. So you try to emulate, let's say, your role model. So when someone is... is uh, really impressive because of their great skills or brain or strength or their accomplishments then other people try to emulate them so to emulate is to imitate or to model yourself after someone and people then we say that they emulate their role models that is people who they want to be like next is enormity now enormity you might just think means enormous or very big but actually, this is a word that is used in a negative sense. And in fact, its meaning is extremely evil. So atrociousness or monstrousness uh, are the synonyms that we have described here. So just to give you a little bit of uh, an insight into this word, guys. So um, enormity, uh, something that is enormous or huge, it can be good, like a huge paycheck. But it can also be bad, like a tre like a tumor a bad or an enormous tumor but when it comes to a word like enormity there are some people who who think that oh no it can be good also it can be bad also so enormity originally meant a crime so people think that it should only be used to describe wickedness or lack of morals 
but there is a certain section of people who also think that because it is similar to enormous so it can be used to apply you know it can be used for things that are not negative also but for our understanding let's stick to the negative connotation of the word enormity next evanescent so evanescent is something that is really short lived or momentary it's a fleeting vanishing thing that's happening only for a very brief moment like a beautiful sunset or a beautiful dream right before your alarm clock goes off all these things they can be described as evanescent or something that is very temporary the last word that we have is eviscerate and as you can see this picture here describes something that is removed you know like to dis it's it's uh, okay ev evascerate is not a pretty word really to evascerate means to remove the insides or the entrails of a creature so on discovery channel you can probably watch a vulture evascerate uh, you know a dead animal that sort of a thing so the words become uh, that that become its synonyms are disembowel and devitalize um now eviscerate also it can be used uh, when you deprive something of its most important quality or you take away let's say a disco ball from a party hi guys so the last lesson just ended a bit abruptly where we were talking about disco when a disco ball in the party so i hope you're out of that party mode now uh, because we are starting with the next uh, fifth fifth lesson is it yes the fifth lesson of my course now where we are covering all the words from all the alphabets a to z and uh, this is uh, a course that i have decided to make keeping in mind that a lot of questions that come in your uh, competitive exams that you sit for uh, multiple choice questions uh, in the english section uh, you get questions where you know you're supposed to mark a similar meaning word so that is why we are covering words and i'm trying to come up with the the original uh, the words kahan se originate hue i'm trying to use the words in the sentence and i'm also trying to give you 3 to 4 similar meaning words uh, or synonyms uh, for the said word so that it becomes easier for you to remember them and hopefully you can attempt these questions successfully in your exam now we're still at e but i promise there are only two more words with e but uh, jitne words i am covering in this lessons please uh, make sure that you read more words and you come up with more words from each alphabet when you're preparing for your courses the first word that i start with is exonerate now i don't know why we have used this image maybe uh, the person who's made the slides has a funny sense of humor but uh, exonerate basically in very very simple terms means to free somebody from blame uh, it's usually used in uh, legal uh, practices or it's it's this is a term that you'll usually find uh, being used in reference to proceedings in the court of law but exonerate basically means uh, to declare somebody not guilty of any criminal charges okay a similar meaning word is acquit a c q u i t where you know a lot of times when you read the newspaper you read that x y z has been acquitted of this crime which means that they have been discharged or they've been exculpated as has been used here exonerate exculpate uh, acquitted a soiled cleared of all the charges this is what exonerate means next expatriate now expatriate again guys <laughs> don't focus on the image uh, let's focus on uh, the explanation of the word here now the funny part about expatriate is that earlier expatriate meant to throw somebody out of his or her native country for instance your native country is india and if you are asked to leave india so you whichever country you go to let's say iran or us or wherever else you become an expatriate in that country because originally you're an indian but you're living in a different country because you've been thrown out of your country but over the years this word has changed its meaning and today expatriate is basically a person who is living away from his or her country but has not been thrown out of the country the person is living away uh, on the basis of his or her own choice for instance if i went to paris to study so for those uh, uh, the the year that i was there in paris i was an expat or an expatriate in paris so usually we use the short form for this that is expat so i'm an expat if a french person comes to india to study or to work or for some other reason to travel not basically travel but yeah like for a longer duration then they they are basically expats it can be a smaller duration as well so uh, over time expatriate has uh sort of uh changed in terms of its meaning or the way it is used but still uh, if you get a question and if there are options like deputy or exile make sure that you tick these and not the other ones i'm sure there should be simple or better alternatives but expatriate basically uh synonyms can be deputy or exile 
Now, quickly, I'll move on to F. So we are done with E. The first five alphabets are done. We'll start with the sixth alphabet, that is F. Now, I've chosen a very interesting word to start uh, this alphabet. Now, there are two pronunciations of facile or facile, as you call it, and I've told you now both the pronunciations. In US English, this is pronounced as facile, but in UK English, the one that we follow in India, it's pronounced as facile. Now, facile is a very unique word. English language ka bahut anokha word hai yek because it can be used as a compliment also and it can be used as an insult also okay now i'll give you three definitions of this word okay for a second don't focus on the slide just focus on what i'm saying definition one facile facile is that somebody arrives at with the due without any care or effort or with something that is lacking depth for instance, it is something that is very superficial. Uh, it's not very deep or uh, it's not penetrating emotionally. For instance, how we say maybe um, item songs are very facile compared to, you know, uh, maybe a guzzle or something that has very good lyrics. So, so that way, facile becomes superficial. Okay. This becomes an insult. Now, next. Facile means performing adroitly without any effort for instance you can say that Sachin you know is his 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 way of playing cricket is facile itne aram se or itne naturally bina kisi effort ke it's so easy for him to just play those amazing shots it's very effortless the way he bats so in this case facile becomes a compliment third definition facile in terms of expressing yourself very clearly or effectively where we have used a word like articulate for instance if i am trying to explain something to you and i try to explain it to you in a manner that i am not struggling for words or i am explaining it to you um, in a very clear or in a very expressive language i'm fluent uh, i'm smooth spoken or uh, i'm very eloquent in the way i'm speaking that becomes facile again as a compliment so two cases we saw compliment one is articulate other is effortless or adroit the way in which it is meant as an insult is skillful in a superficial way. Like, upar upar se, bahati matlab, uh, it lacks depth, you know. It is not something that really moves you. So, it's a very superficial and a very blah sort of an effort. So, I would request you to give me three sentences in which you've used the word facile. And each of these three meanings are explained in those three sentences. So, next time when I open this lesson and if I see the comments, I hope that I have those three uh, sentences from all of you. And that is how I would know that you've understood the meaning of facile. Next, fastidious. Now, fastidious, um, I think it's very simple in terms of pronunciation. Fast and it is fastidious. Fastidious, as the slide over here says, requiring or characterized by excessive care or delicacy. Um, synonym here is meticulous or demanding. Um, maybe you can use demanding as a synonym, but basically fastidious in very simple basic language it means that if you want to describe a person who insists on perfection or who just pays too much attention to maybe food clothing cleanliness then the right word for that person would be that he or she is a fastidious person somebody who's very fussy ya bahut mushkil hai usko khush rakhna ya to please that person that is a fastidious person now fastidious mind you at times is also used as a compliment you know to describe somebody who attention to detail it gives them very good organizing abilities but mostly like 90% of the times it is used as a very disapproving term for example uh, while Rahul would just uh, eat uh, about anything he's not fussy about his food at all but his wife was too fastidious and she barely ate anything so this is how you describe uh, a fastidious or you use fastidious as an adjective to describe a person who's very fussy okay so again you can see meticulous meticulous means attention to detail so here meticulous may we are using uh, fastidious as a compliment like as you can see this person here is being very meticulous in the way he's making whatever he's making here maybe a windmill or something next fidget Again, guys, I think ignore the picture that we've used here. Fidget, just, okay, right now, pause this slide, look at your fingers and start like just, just playing with your fingers, you know, like you just, so it's, you, you, what, what we mean over here is that you're fidgeting with your fingers, okay? To fidget means to move about restlessly or nervously or impatiently. Fidget ka very similar sounding synonym is to fiddle and also to squirm. Now, fidget is, 
uh, simple words, you know, those little movements that you make with your hand or your feet, you know, it, it's a sign to show that you're nervous, you know. So maybe like right now or when you're preparing for your exams or right before your exams or right before an interview when you're nervous and you're just like playing with your fingers and those little movements that you're making those nervous little jittery movements that means that you're fidgeting okay fidget uh, also it means fiddle or squirm can be used as near about synonyms now guys just remember that the words that i'm giving over here as synonyms in some cases can be used interchangeably because their meaning is exactly the same but sometimes their meaning may not be exactly the same so it's more or less similar meaning so i would always suggest that you should uh, research more and spend more time in understanding the meanings of these words next is foreboard as you can see there's an astrology chart here so foreboard means to foretell or to predict uh, to indicate something beforehand uh, for example take this uh, uh, sentence as something that will explain the meaning of the word to you the dark clouds are a foreboding of the storm that is soon to hit uh, the society or the place next can be when the tone of the music changed in the film we all recognize the foreboding that meant someone was about to die or for instance if you're watching a horror movie and suddenly there's that scary music and you realize that you know there might be some scary moment that is about to come so foreboding means that you can foretell or it's a sign of something or it's an omen of something in most cases foreboding is sort of used negatively because you know we're using a we're using a word like an omen of so this is where or how we use the word foreboard or foreboding just remember one thing um there is a word in english language known as forbid forbid means kisi ko kisi cheez se rokna i forbid you to do this or i i forbid you from doing this forbid ka past tense hota hai forbid f o r b a d e do not confuse forbid with forbode okay so take a look at both these words explain their meanings again i'm going to check the comments and see what you've done next fortuitous fortuitous okay so the pronunciation is a little iffy here but uh, you also try to use this pronunciation and say it correctly fortuitous okay um fortuitous means something that is happening uh, by chance it's a lucky accident now the first thing that you need to know here is that fortuitous is not the same as fortunate okay fortuitous simply means it's a lucky accident for example if you and your best friend's families they happen to go on a vacation and you end up being at the same place at the same time so that's a fortuitous coincidence okay so it's something that is incidental and obviously unforeseen it's just a lucky accident you know are what a cool coincidence so instead of if it's a good coincidence if it's a lucky coincidence so you use the term fortuitous you do not say fortunate over here so fortunate and fortuitous are two different things fortunate is lucky fortuitous means by chance or a lucky accident next fusillade fusillade is a simultaneous or continuous discharge of firearms uh so let's say you're watching an action movie okay and the hero's deadly fusillade it resulted in at least one of the enemies or the bad guys being shot so the noun fusillade over here it means a quick round of gunfire like you know discharge ka discharge like in the salman khan movie or something where suddenly you know like there's a barrage of uh, gunshots and uh, this gunfire is uh, it it kills the bad guys so it one meaning of fusillade is this that a quick round of gunfire means a fusillade but it can also be used in a figurative sense to describe like a rapid series of anything such as a fusillade of punches or a fusillade of questions let me give you an example during police interrogation i felt as though the detectives attacked me with the fusillade of questions so uh, this is how we also use the word fusillade so it is not necessarily mean just guns being fired quickly it can also mean questions comments or other such things happening in quick succession okay so it's a fusillade or a salvo so this guys uh, was uh, the next uh, set of words i hope that you're enjoying this if you have any feedback in this please let me know i'm sorry for any um, stammers or stutters in the due course of making this particular lesson but that's because i'm saying all of this live so it just takes a bit of time i hope you're enjoying this do give me your feedback take care and i'll be back with the next lesson very very soon thank you Hello all my lovely students. Um uh, I'm going to start with uh, the next lesson. This is the 6th lesson of my course. 
I'm going to be covering alphabets G and H here and I'm going to be moving very quickly because I have a lot of words that I have put in this particular lesson. But I'm going to make sure that I explain every word nicely so that it remains etched in your memory. And if you forget it, it's not going to be a good thing. Okay. Now, in, in my opinion, uh, the alphabet G has some of the best words in English language. And I have chosen some of my favorite words here. But these are also words that usually end up coming in these competitive exams because of the kind of synonyms that they have. So look out and in your preparation books, see that in MCQs, if these are the words that are coming up, I will just help you in remembering them better. First word is garrulous. Now look at this extremely funny picture here. This man is talking to a statue, okay? So garrulous, as the word explains, means an excessively talkative person, okay? So here we've written excessive talkative in rambling roundabout manner, especially about trivial matters. So if you call a person garrulous, okay, that person is not just talkative, okay. Ye ek insaan aisa nahi hai, jisko sirf baat karna hai. He's somebody or she's somebody who indulges in talking just for the heck of talking, okay. Whether or not there is any real conversation going on, a garrulous person will just talk. For example, this man here. So if you discover that you have a garrulous neighbor sitting next to you on the plane, you might just want to pretend that you're asleep so you don't have to hear them talk. Unless, of course, you really want to know everything that is happening, but that's just totally your choice. Uh, in an exam, in a, in a sentence, if you have to use garrulous, you can just say that uh, um, Rahul was so garrulous that he just could not keep a secret. Okay, so a garrulous person is somebody who is loquacious or a blabbermouth. Okay, again, remember that the synonyms are not exactly similar in meaning, but yeah, near about similar in meaning. Next, gravitate. As you can see, we have this magnet that we can see is attracting or gravitating things towards it. Hence, the word gravitate means to move or tend to move under the influence of gravitational force. Now, if you're thinking that this is too scientific an explanation, just remember that uh, gravitate, let's use gravity as an analogy over here. So, how gravity pulls objects towards Earth, gravitate... Um, describes how people are pulled towards the things that they like. For example, little kids gravitate towards playgrounds or somebody, someone who is athletic will gravitate towards sports or someone with a nice voice will gravitate towards a singing career. If you have to use it in, ex in an example, then you can say that people tend to gravitate towards the most outgoing person at a party. So, you know, you automatically gravitate towards that person. You automatically precipitate or you automatically get attracted or gravitate you're pulled by that thing or by that force okay so you use the word gravitate next grandiloquent now remember the pronunciation or see how i pronounced this pronounce this here it's not grandiloquent it's grandiloquent so the stress is coming on the dill part of it okay so grandiloquent not grandiloquent okay grandiloquent is a fancy term uh, for well somebody who's fancy okay so if you want to call somebody fancy but you don't want to use the word fancy you can just say oh that's grandiloquent okay in fact I would say this this joke okay that I make that the word grandiloquent in itself is a very grandiloquent word okay so it 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 generally it's used in the manner that a person behaves or, or in the manner that a person speaks for example uh, Donald Trump was grandiloquent about himself about his temperament and about his ability to serve the people of the United States so a synonym over here that we're using is pompous so grandiloquent is not just in terms of using big fancy words it's also the manner in which a person sort of boasts or uh, very pompously describes certain things okay and politicians are the usual suspects of this manner of behavior what is this manner of behavior it's grandiloquent next gregarious it's a very cute picture look at this uh centermost frog here okay this frog is somebody who's surrounded by all these other friends frogs so we're assuming that this frog is a gregarious one gregarious is somebody who enjoys the company of others a sociable or affable person so if you know somebody who is outgoing who's sociable or who's found of the who's fond of company of other people so you might want to call him or her gregarious i will use this in a sentence for you gregarious people are likely to hang out with friends every weekend whereas reserved people they like to keep to themselves so gregarious is outgoing 
yeah, we're done with G. So I think those were some really great words. You guys better use them in sentences and get back to me with the comments, okay, below this lesson. We'll start with H and the first word here is hackneyed. Now, hackneyed is a word for language that uh, doesn't pack a punch since it is very overused. Uh, in simple words, let's say you're... Uh, uh, so you, you you ask somebody a question and you expect a good answer but the person yeah it's great it's great so it's a very hackneyed and overused term okay uh, the other synonyms here are trite stale or banal banal is just like bas yaar bahut ghisa pita hackneyed literal translation would be very ghisa pita in hindi so hackneyed is uh, usually used to describe a very tired writing uh, but you can also refer hackneyed plots of television sitcoms for instance these saas bahu serials or saas bahu serials as a theme is a very hackneyed theme okay or very typical theme uh other synonyms instead of just try uh, stale or banal can also be a uh, time worn or tired or commonplace old hat etc another sentence that i can give you for this would be every time my internet goes down the cable company gives me a hackneyed explanation like a very typical excuse you know that is hackneyed next haggle uh you can see these two people are sort of angry with each other we are assuming that one of them is haggling with the other one haggling basically in simple words means to bargain bargain in a petty in a very quibbling or often contentious manner okay to wrangle or to dispute uh see these words are the sounds that they have it's, isn't it just wonderful the kind of the way these words sound guys like i i would just love to use them anyhow i'm just wondering why i don't use them more frequently like squabble or quibble so when you haggle with somebody it means that you're you you're squabbling with that person or you're quibbling with that person a uh, haggle in simple terms is bargaining with somebody but when you tend to get maybe a little bit more argumentative or you're quibbling a little more or that bargaining maybe with that shopkeeper or whoever else to bring down the prices it just ends up taking a little more um, perhaps uh, maybe argumentative tone we can use haggle but it does not necessarily have to be like that also if you're haggling means you're maybe my mom haggled with the shopkeeper and uh, brought down the prices of the trousers so that can be how you use haggle it can also be used completely in place of bargain next hedonism look at this girl she's uh, surfing on these sand dunes right so hedonism strictly speaking it is basically a belief that pursuing pleasure leads to the greatest ethical good in practice though, though the ethical part it sometimes it gets lost in the pleasure part in very simple terms a hedonist okay is a person who practices hedonism a hedonist means that my purpose in life is that i am here just to have pleasures of life for instance a hedonist might just be lying down in bed saying i don't want to go to work or i don't want to study or i don't want to do this my my job is just to like derive the pleasures of life and for me the pleasure of life is to just lie down on my bed so hedonism is is this belief or this philosophy basically i'm not too sure how much gratification would be used as a synonym over here so i would just say avoid uh, let me give you an example of a sentence instead because he is a hedonist henry never does anything which does not give him joy so this is what hedonist basically means so we are assuming this girl here in picture is a hedonist and because surfing on sand gives her joy she is doing it next hegemony like we can see this is a remote control so hegemony we have used a descriptive picture here to tell you that jiske haath mein remote control hota hai that person has the hegemony over others okay a command or authority uh, in meaning we have written leadership especially of one nation over the other for instance united states of america has hegemony over the other nations uh, in general in the un however else you want to say basically hegemony is a political or cultural dominance or authority over others and you can use it in a simpler context also that hegemony of popular kids over other students it means that these popular kids in school they determine what is cool and what is not another example of a sentence for hegemony can be the ceo of the company has hegemony over the employees next hermetic hermetic as you can see there are these jars that are kept closed okay there are sealed jars okay synonym mein bhi humne sealed likha hai so if you want to keep let's say something fresh or let uh, assuming there are cookies inside this so if you want to keep it crisp uh, for a long time so you store it in a jar which has a hermetic or an 
एयर टाइट सील सो हर्मेटिक मीन्स समथिंग दैट इज सील्ड सो दैट नो एयर कैन गेट इन दैट इज वॉट हर्मेटिक मीन्स दैट इज इम्पर्वियस टू एनी एक्सटर्नल इन्फ्लुएंस और एयर टाइट ना वी कैन यूज दिस इन अ लार्जर कॉन्टेक्सट ऑल्सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल लुक एट दिस सेंटेंस द बिलियन एयर बॉट अ प्राइवेट आईलैंड सो दैट ही कुड रेज हिज किड्स इन अ हर्मेटिक इन्वायरमेंट सो हर्मेटिक मीन्स जिसका बाहर से कोई इन्फ्लुएंस अंदर नहीं आ रहा है इट्स एब्सोल्युटली एयर टाइट इट्स एब्सोल्युटली सील्ड इट्स इम्पर्वियस टू एनी आउटसाइड इन्फ्लुएंस दैट बिकम्स हर्मेटिक नेक्स्ट इज हेंचमैन नाउ हेंचमैन इज समबडी हु इज एन अकम्पलिस और एन अप्रेंटिस इन अ क्राइम अप्रेंटिस मे बी नॉट सो मच बट या एन अकम्पलिस डेफिनेटली इन अ क्राइम सो इन the meaning that we have described here is a henchman is an unscrupulous and ruthless subordinate especially a criminal um so a henchman is a collaborator or a partner in crime in very simple words your partner is crime in partner in crime is your henchman so the sentence can be robert and his henchman they broke into the bank and stole all the money so henchman you know in movies how you would see that uh, there is this one mil- uh, one villain and the guys that surround him they are his henchmen next is the last one that we have with alphabet h that is hoodwink hoodwink like you can see scam scam all these scam posts here so hoodwink means to trick or mislead somebody um for example you know people say that uh, especially right now with demonetization they say that beware of fake atms that try to hoodwink you into giving your credit card details or your codes etc and maybe they just use it to steal your money so to deceive or to trick somebody uh, blindfold maybe blindfold is literally when you're blindfolding somebody kisi ki aankhon ke upar patti dalna in simple words in hindi it would mean kisi ko dhoka dena ya kisi ko trick karna or to deceive somebody let me use this in a sentence for you in an attempt to hoodwink the woman into opening the door so hoodwink the woman into opening the door matlab to trick the woman into opening the door the rapist pretended to be a police officer so when you deceive somebody means that you hoodwink that person so you can also use the word hoodwink there i hope that you the, you're finding this particular set of uh, lessons useful for you do give me your feedback and tell me the ways in which i can improve we have covered uh, alphabets g and h in this lesson i'll be starting with i and trust me guys there are a lot of words with alphabet i so i'm going to spread i over maybe two or three lessons and uh, i hope you're finding this useful i'll come back with the next lesson very soon have a great day